make of Man United overall? What, what did you make of our performance? A lot of people are calling me out because obviously I've st- stated that I think Ten Hag's taken us as far as we can. Were there green shoots of improvement? Was, was it was it good, the bad, the ugly? How, what did you make of the overall performance um, from Man United? The overall performance, especially that first half, it was it was not good. Like we got that first goal, and I was hoping that goal would inspire us to you know play some football and, and get on the front foot. And we just reverted back to type. Sat back, we allowed Everton to have the ball a lot. We uh, we we allowed them to progress through the midfield and in the wide areas way too easily. And shout out to our Nana today because he saved us of quite a few goals today, especially in that first half. He has improved so much, and without him today, we we concede at least two uh, today. And 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 we need to improve that as a team. And seeing Kobe Mainu fit into that midfield is great. But then when you've got McTominay. And he's still using this tactic with Bruno, making him drop deep. It it it, it just it just there's no point of Mooney paying so well if you've got these guys doing what they're doing. Rash the forwards again today, it just wasn't clicking that much. Like there's little bits there here and there, but overall as a team, we're still not cohesive. We're still like, unable to pass the ball out from the back. And I had a conversation with my dad just before I came on, and he's saying. You can't. My standard. He said my standards are, are, are like, unrealistically too high. I was like, "What do you mean? Like, all I wanted to do is play decent. Even I don't expect him to win every game." He goes, "In terms of because of the so many injuries and so many key players are out, we I shouldn't expect them to play a certain way." But I said to him, "Dad, it's not about playing like Barcelona. It's literally just about having a base level where you can look and see cohesion in the team. And right mm-hmm. now, we don't really see it. And I, I call it an Oli special because." It felt like what Ali would do sometimes where the moment mm-hmm. brilliant, you get a penalty, and then because the game's so far away from the opposition team, the game opens up and we, and we end up scoring more goals. So there's a lot more improvements, especially in that midfield cohesion and the forward line. We need to improve more. And But shout out to Onana f- as well, because mainly yeah. the guy actually will get the your, dad, as well. your dad makes a good point, I think, when it comes to... No, I'm not saying it's not... Oh, I'm not saying he's wrong. He, he makes a great point. Your dad's a hush, man. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, no, but, that, but that makes a great <laughs> point. But at the same time, it's 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 when I see Luton Town and Everton and, Bo- and all these smaller teams, Sheffield United, Burnley, play better football than us with teams that even with our injured team, is not as good as our yeah. team. Well, you, 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 if you think back to the p- earlier game today, Spurs had a lot of players out there. None of us would want anywhere near our club, and they moved the ball well. They, I think they got the game management wrong. They put too much energy, too much effort into the first 45 minutes and died. The game management was off, but the style of football is there, and I, that is an area still for me. And look, I suppose the question is, I would ask, I'm going to ask Hannah this question. Would most teams, irrespective of their season, struggled in that first half against Everton based on what they've been through this week, the atmosphere, the, the very strange corrupt cards. I still don't understand how the Premier League are corrupt for punishing you for a rule that you admitted you broke. I'm still, no one's explained that to me. But do you think a lot of teams would have struggled there today due to that factor? Yeah, I mean, I think Goodison Park on a normal day is one of those away, I mean, no away game in the Premier League is easy, but it's one of those places that you go to thinking, you know, it's going to be a tough crowd. And like it was, and the corrupt cards were silly and it, did look a bit ridiculous but I mean fair play to them they're going to do what they're going to do in that regard but I think the first 45 minutes I don't know if that was a reflection of the struggle from like you know the reception from the crowd but obviously second half was much better but I think yeah any team would have struggled but we we, we should and could have done better that first half definitely we weren't good enough in that mm. first half like they struggled with their with, with our hold up play I will tell you that we didn't have enough good players to hold up uh, the ball today and you saw that especially in the second, in, in the last, what, I would say 20 minutes of the first half, they kind of had us on the ropes, I'm not going to lie. Beginning with what that one uh, clearance that Kobe Mano had off the line when it ricocheted off Maguire's body. Our holdup was a struggle. But when you look at the personnel that we had, Martial wasn't really involved in the first half. He's physically still not there, even though he scored. Rashford holdup play is not there. Bruno's holdup play is not there. McTominay's holdup play is not there. And Garnacho's holdup play is not there. So I'm not surprised that we couldn't hold up the ball. Every time we won it, we couldn't really hold it for about 10 seconds. So that eventually will prove. You could tell that 100% we did miss Hoyland for that aspect because he's he's good at winning the ball. He's good at holding the ball. He wins fouls. He moves the ball around well. That aspect we struggled from. I will say, though, that we played similar to how, and I don't know if you guys noticed that, we played very similar to how we started against Copenhagen until that red card and last game. 
When you look at the goal that we scored, do you guys remember the first goal we scored against Copenhagen? It was Rashford played it. Was it Bissaka or Delo that they playing on the right? Bissaka. I think it was Bissaka. Yeah. yeah. Same idea. Pass. Uh, sorry, cross into the box. The other one was a cut into Hoyland. Scored. This one was a cross. But it was the exact, same exact buildup, which is why he's still using Rashford on the right. I'm, I was a little bit surprised that he played Manu and Shaw today because I thought he's going to keep him. Because Manu has been available, if you guys remember. He just hasn't been using him. I thought he's going to wait a little bit more until he gets... He back from fitness. He had a, he had a game as on the under-18s, I think it was. Or under yeah, he played he him like a couple under-21 games. Max fitness wasn't there. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's had, a couple, he's had but, like three games as well. Yeah. Under, in, in the um, under-21s. I did think he was going to hold him until he gets some of his players back, which is why I'm not surprised he played him today because he played Shaw. And, and here's the reason why. I think today he focused more on the build-up from the back because he knows with Shaw that he does get a little bit of a build-up. Regulon doesn't give you that. And Juan Bissaka doesn't give you that when he plays the low on the left. He knew that with Shaw today, he could get an extra man in, in, in that back line. That not only is he good if he inverts him into the midfield and Kobe drops, it could be the, be the other way around. And he focused on that today. Our buildup was not bad today in the first phase. It's just like when you go into the midfield and the front mm -hmm. line, we didn't have enough players that holds the ball, which is why he still played on the wings, which is why Rashford was still on the right and McTominay is in that middle. I think the middle we uh, the, the minute we get Ericsson back, we get Hoyland back, we get a couple more players back in that midfield. He will try to go back and implement what he was trying to do in preseason, which is holding the ball and building the, the ball from the middle. Because if you notice, we don't build anything from the middle now. Like someone is so high up the pitch. Rashford is hugging the wing. We're relying on crosses. I mean, we scored from across today. Cross, overlap, same thing. We've done that for three games so far, and he's been getting his results. And I think slowly, slowly, he's going to start to implement that that that, uh, that buildup from the middle again. He got Kobe now. He got Shaw now. I think the next important one is going to be Martinez. Martinez and Eriksson are going to be very important for him in that midfield to go back to where he used to try to do. And I think until then, we're going to continue to see Rashford on yeah. the way. Oh, that, that makes a lot of sense. Just to let you know, your mic is kind of cutting in and out a bit. I don't have the connection. Yeah. I've been told I, I need to. I need. I need to fix it. I don't know what's going on. Okay, cool. I just want to let you know, just in I case. Think, you might I think just be trying to adjust it. I'll, we'll talk afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Do so, mic. I gotta uh, adjust it. Sorry. Yeah, there's an interesting comment here, super chat that says, "I know people think McTominay hides and doesn't do his job with Kobe, uh, but TiVo Football did a video on what he does, and it makes sense in games." I haven't seen the video, so I don't quite know what you're alluding to. This is the situation how I see it. It's never just on one person. Like Bruno Fernandez has his flaws. I'm very aware of what they are. We all know what they are. So if you're going to have him in the team, you've got to have people around him that are going to complement that. The problem is with Man United, we're always unbalanced. So we have too many players that do the Hollywood balls. We have too many players that maybe can't hold up play. And we don't have enough that can do what Kobe does. If you have three or four more Kobe's in different positions that can hold up play, that are very comfortable in possession... The Rashfords and the Brunos, when it comes to their sort of sometimes their ill discipline on the ball, you don't notice it as much. And that's why it's, it's about balance. And that's what Man United lack. We have often have too much of the same type of player and it causes problems. Then what we do is we scapegoat the ones that we don't like. That's atypically what we do as Man United fans, as, a, as an example. Just like um, Sunshine did earlier on the season with Onana. <laughs> it's a joke. I'm joking. I'm joking when I say that. Actually, it's a good um, reminder. Can, can, he, he, I wanted to ask you about him, Sunshine. How, how much do you think he's improved in recent weeks, especially like commanding the, the box saves, etc.? Do you, do you, have you seen a marked improvement in Onana? Uh, yeah, 100%. I mean, I said it on the last stream. Um, and it, it's, it's quite ironic because everyone was screaming about Onana coming in for his kicking. And again, it's been his saving ability and his commanding of the box in certain areas that have been the key thing that's been standing out for him. So, look, um, my criticism was very, very fair of Onana in terms of I just didn't think we needed him because... Again, if you're coming in for shot stopping, no problem. We already had a shot stopper. Uh, but the other key areas that he does have over De Gea is he's more commanding in that box for crosses, uh, especially for crosses, corners. and doesn't mind taking an impact as well. So for me, that's the only improvement I've seen on the goalkeeping situation. The kicking's malarkey. For me personally, it will only improve until you get those profiles in there, which is, again, exactly what I stated before. It's pointless being able to kick the ball at the back if you ain't got players that can hold up the ball. Staffy alluded to it with, with Hoyland. Makes no sense if you haven't got players that can stick the ball, you know, or win the win the first ball in the air. It makes no sense to me. So, um, I still think it's a regression in that side in that side of things. But the part where he's actually keeping the ball out of the back of the net, which was the main thing I focused on, that's the bit that I wanted personally. Uh, and he's doing that, and it, and it shows today. The clean sheet happened. Uh, I think three key saves, if I'm if I'm being fair, especially the one in the second half. I think was it um, Idrissa Gay who swerved it out. 
to the yeah, you know, it was a, good, yeah. a beautiful save. I mean, we've seen De Gea do that. It's no, it's no issue. So that's not a that's not a disrespect, but that's what you need. You need to maintain that. And I've always said, if you're going to change the goalkeeper, make sure you imp you um you improve the the pros as well as the cons. Do you know what I mean? Not just one for yeah. another, because otherwise yeah, it's yeah. gonna it's not gonna balance out. So for me, no, I, I, it's yeah. an, for me it's an incredible performance from from Monona and you know long mate continuing that penalty save, pretty much similar to De Gea when he saved Matters free kick was a turning point or so it seems. So yeah, yeah it, 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 it does. And look, and again, I, I was only having a bit of a joke, you know, along with knowing each other. And I'm just now seeing the goalie that I was so excited about as bringing in strong hands, getting to these saves and. I'm now starting to feel I got I got to a point maybe five games ago where every time there's a shot at him, I was like, oh, holding my breath. Now I'm not even unless that shot looks super dangerous. I almost start looking around the pitch before it's even got to him. What's he going to do with it when he gets it? Because I'm very comfortable in what he's doing. Uh, have you noticed that as well, Han, uh, that he's, he's really sort of settling in now at Old Trafford? Yeah, I think. Since that buying game, I think he's been the kind of player that we all thought he was in the summer, you know, after that Champions League final. But it's just nice to see him get some confidence because I know it's part of being a United player, but he's been like founded, he's been bantered. And it's just nice to see like someone who's got probably the hardest job, like gaining his confidence. So I think I think he'll be great. I think he'll be you know, get to the point of the De Gea shot stopping levels that we've seen. But he's definitely much more like you say, Terry, commanding in the box. And it's just it's just nice to watch because before, like, players would kind of bully him. And now he's kind of got, like you say, in the last few games, he's got a bit more respect about him, I think. And, yeah, it's just nice to see. He has he's, he's basically... Uh, he's he's joined up, so it's a quick stat, quick stat. He's the joint um, leading uh, goalkeeper for clean sheets with five. <laughs> Say that louder. <laughs> Say that louder. <laughs> He's the joint leading goalkeeper for clean sheets with five with Sam Johnston and Nick Post. So, so the thing that I love about what he's done is every time he messed up and a lot of people were like, we don't want to hear about the apologies or the ownership. Like I thought that was important. So at some points I didn't say, I think it is important when a player in his role does say, I know it's all like didn't come out and blame other people. He's like, I'm fully aware that I'm a problem right now, which tells me he's going to do something about it. Like when players come out and they dismiss it, I mean, we all had problems when Maguire would always say like, it's the forwards, it's this or that. When you don't have that introspect, it actually, it's a bigger problem because you're like, so you truly think you're okay. You're not going to do anything to fix it. So Nana got his head on straight. And it's real tough when you come into a league, you come to Man United, you come to a, you come to a team that's just discombobulated with injuries. Like even right now, like, listen, we all hate on Maguire, but a big part of why Onan is probably doing well is he's got a settled front uh, two in front of him at the moment. Like we've had the same center backs for a bit. Um, and Maguire has been decent. Like he has been good. I cannot say he hasn't been. So I do think that helps the, the keeper with a little bit of um, confidence as well. You know that you're not going into every game about to get even though he did have a couple of shots put on him but he he had help today like he did have help they helped him clear balls off the line they were there the team was there with him too so i i love what i'm seeing from him i mm. i would love to see the kicking come back but we know until martinez comes back we know until we have a midfielder in there with Manu or somebody who can hold it's not going to happen so sunshine was right like no one can say anything about it like shot stopping was never our problem um with De Gea. and then when it went away all of a sudden we lost an aspect that saved us in so many games yeah. was a keeper yeah. who could do this. So we need that. We need it. A hundred percent. I'm being called out here in this super chat from Olu, who says, Terry, you're fake as fuck. Um, keep that same energy you had for Arteta, uh, sorry, uh, for uh, Ten Hag um, out. No new no friends. New friends. No new friends. Man had injuries all year, uh, but loving uh, on 10th place, Ch but you loving on 10th place, Chelsea. So this is the interesting thing. So first and foremost, I won't ever ignore Super Chats. There's no block him. No, no, and I won't get offended. No mod, leave him alone. It's fine. My energy for 10 Hag hasn't changed. All that I am, all that I am doing is I think I'm being the opposite of fake. So I've, I, I disagree with, not disagree with, but I think Lee's reaction yesterday to his team winning in the last minute to go top and being annoyed about it, I could never do. Even if a player that I don't rate or a manager that I think is, is taking us as far as he can, by the way, based on things that he has said, and we win and we play well, we have some good moments, I'm going to celebrate it. What I'm not going to do is create an agenda, and no matter what happens, maintain my anger and my frustration. That's just not me as a, as a person. In terms of loving on Chelsea, 
It's not true. I spoke about it yesterday. I spoke about it in a video earlier on today about where the criticism needs to come. At the same time, when I've praised Chelsea, it's that I think they are going to get it right. And I spoke about the medium to long term with them as opposed to they're brilliant right now. And at the same time, I do think that performances are more sustainable than results over a prolonged period of time. And I think we have to stop viewing football sometimes through this lens of the here and now. I understand why the kind of what have you done for me lately approach, but football doesn't end at the end of the season. It is, is a continuous cycle. So sometimes not every decision can be for the best, of, best for your team and club. Now you have the future plan at the same time. How do I know this? You read the books or listen to the, 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 the sort of people that run the greatest clubs in the world. That's exactly how they did it. So this isn't me stating this, what you should do. It's the greatest people in the world, but I appreciate the super chat, brother. Thank you.